Send in the troops. Democrats are beginning to sound like Republicans as crime continues to explode in their cities. Take D.C., which is on pace to have the deadliest year in two decades. Shocking security footage just released shows the moment when one of Senator Rand Paul's staffers was randomly stabbed while walking around in our nation's capital back in March. Police say the suspect had been released from prison just a day earlier. And it was a blood-soaked start to this month. A surge of shootings in D.C. left 13 people dead in the first five days. Democratic D.C. Council member thinks it's time the National Guard step in to restore order. I have spoken with the D.C. National Guard. And while I have to have more conversations with the chief police, which I have today, and the mayor and my colleagues, we have a long way to get there. We just know that police alone is not getting it done. And we are clearly, clearly in, a war in a war zone. zone. If, you, if you don't know you are in a war zone, that means you haven't been here. Our government has to step up. Our police department has to step up. And our residents have to step up. We're tired of this shit. Yes. And enough is enough. enough is Excuse enough. my language, but I want to be quite frank. Wow. But that's what happens when it's all crime and no punishment. D.C. didn't prosecute 67 percent of those arrested last year thanks to defund the police. I, I mean, Greg, I think we're now reaching a point where people in these cities, Democrats, are begging for someone to do something. Forgive me if I sound a bit racist, but these stories seem to all look alike. Yes. Meaning, in each case, Trump offered a solution for it years ago and was condemned. In every case... In every case, he said something like, you need more police, you need the National Guard. And because, I call it, what do I call it, the Trump containment disorder, contamination disorder, you can't be seen agreeing with anything that Trump believes in, right? Because you can't be at a cocktail party and say, I agree with Donald Trump. It's how petty the media is. They'd rather argue against a good point than defend and, and, and actually defend the criminal than be seen somehow on the same side as Trump. The problem with these cities is a lot of the good people are going to leave, yep. and they are, they and, and then all you're going to have is bad people there, which are the criminals. You can't, if, if you enforce law and order on just the law abiding, that doesn't make any sense, right? It's a, you create a murder capital, and you're a coward. It's interesting that you have white liberals pretty well off saying, you know, no bail, defund the police, let's not even talk about the crime. And then you have black politicians in the streets in these urban areas saying, please help us. So several years ago, uh, during the George Floyd uh, riots, Senator Tom Cotton placed an op-ed an op in All the right. New York Times in which he said, we need the National Guard. And it was so outrageous to the left that two of the editors at the New York Times got fired right. for allowing someone to express their opinion in the in the New York Times after it had gone through an exhausting and excruciating fact check process. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not exactly sure, but I think that the same city councilman had a different point of view three years ago. What's changed? The, the situation is so dire. The number of homicides is up an incredible amount, and he was responding reacting to a mass shooting that happened on Saturday night. And we had one of the mothers of the young men that was killed. He was 35 years old. Uh, his name was Bernard B.J. Hodges, and he worked three jobs. He took care of three kids. He take care of, took care of his wife. He went to school to become an HVAC uh, engineer to make sure that he actually had real good, solid work. He'd get up in the morning. He'd go work for the uh, water treatment uh, system in Washington, D.C. And she said there's just no... There's no one that is putting up structures. Like she said, like a rec center. There's some place where they could hang out because what's happening is they're hanging out on the corner and then the whole idea of snitching has become something that is so bad that nobody wants to talk to anybody else about what's, ha what's really happening. So then the police, they're outmanned. They don't have any intel, so they can't really do anything about it. And then if they do something about it, the people aren't prosecuted. So I, I understand the need for the National Guard. I don't know if that will actually happen, but I think that, as James Freeman of the Wall Street Journal said today, like, instead of defund the police, like, the chant could be help the police, and maybe then the prosecutors would take an interest. Since Black Lives Matter, we all agree, Joe Biden said it himself, do you think since Black Lives Matter, Joe Biden would send in the National Guard to D.C. to save black lives? I think that Joe Biden would be open to any conversation that meant that more people would have a better quality of life and not be victims of violent crime. So I don't know if that's. 
I don't know. I didn't, I didn't call him about it, but I think that he would be open to any of these conversations. He's shown himself to be that way. And also, he's been more conservative on crime and policing than majority of the Democrats who were running for office, certainly in the Democratic primary in 2020. I think it's absolutely heartbreaking. It was a wonderful interview this morning um, with B.J. Hodges' mother. And I hate to see this. Um, I do also hate when the conversation is just isolated around liberal, city, liberal cities when there are crime waves going on all over the country in cities like Omaha and Nebraska, which has a Republican mayor. For all of you keyboard warriors at home are about to tweet at me <laughs> that that's not the case. Jesse Waters is number one. Or like in Tulsa, Oklahoma, why does Jacksonville now have a Democratic mayor? Because the Republican mayor failed to keep crime under control, and so he was replaced. Same in Colorado Springs, where now there's an independent mayor. In every and instance, though, it always goes back to liberal policies, yeah. unfortunately. Well, then, the that's the just always, you can cherry-pick this, again, but it's always liberal I'm, policies. I, Sorry. I'm not just cherry-picking it. I'm trying to be accurate about what's going on across the country. Like, New York City is doing a lot better than it was. The murder rate is down. The violent crime rate is down. We if should talk about that. A, if you start at what? the low, that's like that's bragging the gas prices the gold are down. Compared just, to what? No, we're okay. just trying to be accurate. He, he, here's a try problem. harder. <laughs> here's a problem with all of this: that the, the innocent people have to stand by and suffer as the left keeps making the same harebrained mistakes because they're too slow on the uptake. OK, we had a problem with crime in the 90s. We resolved it and we were in great shape. Why? Because we increased police on the street. We made sure that people were prosecuted and then the citizen was safe. Now the left hasn't learned from that. So they have to pull us back. So we have to learn the same thing all over again by saying, no, nope, get rid of the police and it'll be it will solve the criminal problem. Get rid of the police because, you know, they're serial racist murderers. OK, and then. Now they're saying, well, maybe you should bring in the National Guard. This from the same group who for years hates the National Guard. They hate the military. They hate the flag. They hate anything that has to do with law and order in the military. And it takes them this long to come around and say, gee, maybe that might make sense. And the idea of 67 percent of the arrests not being prosecuted, you know whose fault that is? Merrick Garland. It goes right to his door because it is the United States attorney who was in charge of the prosecution of crime in the District of Columbia, which is not a state. And if you were refusing 67 percent of the arrest, everybody knows that 67 percent of the arrest probably represents one quarter of the crime that's committed. And that's because Garland and Biden don't prioritize crime. And in the in the end, the the idea of martial law that when someone even mentioned it during the Trump administration, the left went crazy. And now the left is bringing up martial law. But how many people had to die in the years yeah. since then? How many people had to suffer? How many people had to had to suffer a, a, a loss of someone that they love? Terrible. That's because the left policies, they go through the mistakes over and over again when we had them all figured out. But Trump brought up martial law when there were peaceful protests going on. Yeah, mostly and the protests, peaceful. No, 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 the, no the, not the mostly. Protests, what was going on right, but that the, he sent them. The protests in 2020 right. were some of the worst in the country. They were tearing down buildings, police precincts, and neighborhoods, and businesses. So I wouldn't compare like a one-on-one, -on -one, although I spent my life doing that, to what was going on in 2020. We have to leave it there. That's a shame. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.